thing is terrible. No, I hit my elbow. Yeah. Better. This is showing you bees because it's true of bees. All right, so this is first live. I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and we'll do some other video work and stuff, and have a little video coming out with this, too. I figured might as well test this and see how the live works, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. But anyways, this was a boer goat that we um, processed uh, the other day. It's been sitting for about four days now in cooler on ice, uh, letting the meat age. And we're going to go ahead and start uh, getting our cuts of meat off of this. This is I'm starting with the loin just because this takes up the most amount of space uh, and it's fairly quick to process. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be to trim off some of the fat. And what we're trying to do is get down to the back strap. That's what we uh, pull out first is our back straps, or I guess they would be the loins. And I like these boneless. You can cut the spine in half and get a loin chop uh, bone in, but uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, having the bone in. We like to cut these better uh, as like a back strap. Hey, welcome. This is our live, so thanks for joining. We'll pull the uh, back straps out here. Just uh, find your um, spine here. And you're just gonna run your knife down either side of that, all the way down as far as you can get. And your back strap is on either side of that center spine. Get in here. Okay, so I make my first cut in and I go, I can tell I'm just on the right side of the backbone. And so I'm just gonna follow that backbone all the way down to the bottom here and keeping a little bit of pressure against the uh, backbone.
and family campground was it your live yesterday that North Shore preparedness rated? Once you get down each side of that spine, then you can start working your way out and working your fillets off of that back. There you go, there is your loin, your goat loin. Looks like my lighting is not great today. Uh, Pandera, is that a thigh of a cow or deer? This is a boer goat. So this is our, these are our, uh, pandemic goats. Um, we have never had goat before. And it was really hard to find it in the local butcher shops. There was a butcher shop that was supposed to get some goat. And they ended up going out of business before they got the goat in. We did find some. Um, it was like $17 a pound. Um, and so we were waiting to see if we got deer tags this year. Um, none of us got deer tags. And so we knew that we needed some meat for the freezer. And so we found two uh, younger boer goats. And we pick them up to grow out to try it for ourselves. Since we could not find it in a butcher shop, we decided to grow our own up and uh, butcher them ourselves. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna do the same thing. That's uh, one side of the loin off, and then we're gonna go down the other side of the backbone, all the way down.
Yes, that too. Um, we have friends that we bought lamb from at the beginning of the year. They are still trying to find a butcher shop that'll butcher the rest of them. Um, we have some friends that do dog training. Um, and they use lambs for training their dogs for herding. They do uh, sheep herding. And um, they had like 20 or 30 lambs in the spring and they use them for sheep herding. And towards the end of the season, they just sell them to friends and family. And we got, they were started trying to get rid of them. I want to say in about June is when we got ours from them. And uh, we brought it and we, we processed it ourselves and butchered it. Um, they still have all of them. They're trying to get them processed for the rest of their friends and family. And they can't find anybody that is as an opening to process their lambs for them. Um, I think they have about eight or 10 left. They're trying to get me to do it. I just don't have the time or the space to hang meat to let it age. Um, I would need a walk-in cooler or something like that um, in order to, I like to let all my aged meat or let my meat age. Um, usually about three days minimum, usually five to seven days or so. Um, That's not too bad. Okay. Um, yeah, they were trying to see if they could pay me to butcher all the the lamb for them. And I told them I just, I don't have the space or the time really to uh, process another 10 to 12 lamb for them. Butchers in Australia, lamb, but no goat. Yes, we noticed that when we were, when we wanted to do the same thing with lamb, we were going to buy uh, some lamb from the store. And all of it seems to come from Australia, New Zealand area. Uh, what age is ideal to butcher goats? Um, this was our first time doing goats, but we let this guy go to 125 pounds. I've heard he was born this spring. So he's about nine months then, I guess. Um, I don't know if it's, when we looked it up, it seemed ideal weight was more closer to about the 90 pound, uh, weight. And that seems to be where you get the most meat versus uh, bone structure. Everybody was saying about 90 pounds. Um, we just didn't have the time to do him yet. So he was, he's a hundred and he was 125 pounds. And we have one more out there. Um, he's like 110 pounds. He's going to be processed here. Uh, as soon as this guy's done, we'll start the other one. Uh, weathered or intact male? Um, we actually did one of each. We were very curious to see if we could tell the difference on taste. So we weathered one and left the other one intact. So knew with our, uh, with our venison, with the deer, that they're all intact and they're not gamey or, you know, have an off flavor. That's what we've heard that you can kind of get with uh, intact males. Uh, so we weathered this one. This guy was weathered. Like I said, he was 125 pounds. The other one is the same age. They're twins. He's only 110 pounds. He's intact. So he gained an extra 15 pounds being weathered 
versus intact. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to see if we can taste the difference between the two. Okay, there is your other boneless strap or tenderloin. Welcome, Kyle. Yeah, we will do, like I said, that's the reason why we did uh, one of each is to be able to do a taste test to see if we can taste a different between um, intact or weathered. So yeah, we'll definitely do a taste test. Hi, Urban Grandpa Pepper, Prepper. Sorry about that. Now that uh, the tenderloins are off, um, I'm going to go through here and just try to clean up some of this meat. All this will go to ground, um, cut some of the rib meat out, and take the neck off. Sometimes the neck, we will uh, roll it and tie it and bake it like that. Usually the neck is a slow cooker uh, meat because it has... Um, just a little bit uh, tougher of a meat. It has a lot of muscular structure to it, so it's something you want to cook slower in the crock pot or uh, Insta pot, probably, or pressure cooker to uh, help break down those uh, muscle fibers and, and make it a nice tender, tender piece. I in the kitchen with Karen. It's kind of weird, just, just like I said, this is my first live and a little different talking to the camera and not being able to hear you guys. I'm used to watching everybody else's videos and hearing you guys talk all the time. I'm not used to just talking to uh Oh, it's good to know. Uh, built on the Rock Homestead. Yeah, like I said, we've we've uh, had deer before, and they're all intact, and it's never been an issue. Even, I mean, our hunting season around here is in the rut, so they're intact males in the rut, and we've never had uh, an issue with off taste. Um, we figured if they're handled well, and you keep the meat cool, and they're processed quickly and you get the temperature um, cool quickly, I don't, uh, I don't think I've ever noticed any gaminess or anything like that. So.
still needs to be um, trimmed up a little bit. There's a lot of fat on there, but this is one that, like I said, we will um, kind of roll it. A, a neck fillet, roll it up and, and tie it and do a, a longer cook on that pressure cooker or crock pot to tenderize it up a little bit. And there's the other side. And by no means am I a butcher or do I really know a whole lot of what I'm doing. Um, I do enjoy this. I usually just have watched other videos of butchers doing the work. I don't really know what a lot of the cuts are, but I know what works for our family. Um, so like on the rear legs and stuff, anything that can be a steak, I cut into a steak. If it's too small for a steak, I cut it into uh, stew meat. If it's too small for stew meat, it goes into ground. Um, it's kind of how, how we do it. We go through this later finish cleaning up all of the meat off the ribs and everything. For that, let's go grab the rear legs and start getting those cut apart. Be right back. Okay, rear leg section. Hands. <laughs> A little distracting. Yeah, Gil, I I love it. I it's I've got a lot to learn, but I try and I do enjoy it a lot. I I really enjoy um, being able to process this meat for our family and just knowing where it came from and the taste. I mean, this, you've been very very happy with uh, the venison, the lamb. Um, like I said, this is our first time tying the goat, uh, so we will hopefully. Uh, enjoy this too because we have one more and we've kind of got into breeding lower goats for meat production so um, we've got three does that we're breeding right now so we'll have lower goat kids here in the spring that we're going to probably keep a couple of and um, if we like the lower meat the goat meat uh, then we will continue doing this so that off. Okay. 
there are lines in between all the muscles. And they're pretty pronounced. You can kind of follow those lines and each muscle comes off in its own piece. And that's how you get like your, your uh, rumps and roasts and different cuts like that. Apparently having a dairy nanny with a Boer Bach makes great kids that grow quickly due to the extra milk from mom. Yes, and that is uh, one cross we're trying. Um, we have three really big Boer does, and we're going to breed those uh, two big ones with our um, Boer Bach. Um, and then we have one Boer Doe that's on the smaller side. I, we think she's got some probably dairy mixed in with her already because she's um, not really the right uh, confirmation is what I guess it's called confirmation shape and size for a Boer. So we are yeah, let's make jerky. Um, the one Boer doe that's on the smaller side, we're going to breed her to our dairy buck. So we have a buck that is a miniature Nubian, and we have a buck that is a full blood Boer. So we're going to mix um, the one smaller doe because we're worried that her babies might be too big if we breed her to our full blood Boer. So we're gonna breed her to the dairy and we're kind of curious on that cross and having a little bit more dairy mixed in with her if that will really help her um, produce milk for the kids and uh, see how that cross kind of turned out. We're curious on that. So that's one of the crosses we're trying for, uh, this winter. Yeah, we looked for Kikos. I really wanted to cross. Um, we wanted to cross our Boer with Kiko. Um, just for the, the Kikos are so disease resistant. Um, we wanted to cross our Boer buck with uh, Kiko does. Um, they're just not around here. We can't find, we couldn't find any Kikos in our area. I kind of bone this whole leg out here real quick. I think. Kind of use the tip of your knife, wiggle your way around all the bones. the hip joint 
And there's whole uh, leg of goat. Some people will keep this whole um, lamb and goat butcher exactly the same. So that would be, you know, your whole leg of lamb. You would drop it off here and that would be a bone in leg of lamb. I'm going to go ahead and uh, debone this and break apart the roasts and cut into steak. Here. Might hear the uh, turkeys chirping a little bit. We've got 20 tur turkeys that showed up yesterday for our 4-H um, club. So I think we've got, we're going to keep, I think, six for us. And then we've got our uh, rest of our 4-H club coming over uh, on Sunday to pick out turkeys. We're going to do our turkey project again. So we'll have turkeys for the Nevada Junior Livestock Show in uh, I think it's May. You might hear them kind of chirping in the back. They're in a big stock tank right behind me over here. There's just a big hip bone in here. I'm going to get past all that. Down to the socket. There's the entire hip out. Go through here and still, I mean, lots of little meat we can clean up, sort of that in the uh, grind pile. But that's all bone. There's our other leg. Go ahead and uh, debone this. Yeah, that's fine. Trim some of the fat off. Right down the back side, there's one of those seams. Go down that all the way to the bone. There's a gland in here that you don't want to get into. It's a horm hormone gland. On and Annings, crossing with Australian bush, mini crossbower. Oh, cool. Both Kikos. Yeah, I mean, Idaho's not too far from us. It's just we haven't had really done much traveling uh, this year. But yeah, that's, I think even you are only about six, seven hours from us. Well, Twin Falls is about six hours, and then I think you're not too far from there. Bower go with Nubian Ba. Bordeaux's udders are great for nothing, but they have great udders. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Bowers are bowers have weird udders. One of these out here has three udders. Um yeah, bowers are not known for being great milk producers at all. That's that weird gland, some sort of a scent gland or some sort of hormonal gland that's in their leg there. And that's something you don't want to um, get into. I'm actually going to go wash my hands, throw that in the trash and wash my hands. I'll be right back. Yeah, the Kikos are very popular. Um, Oklahoma, Texas. Um, I want to say it's the Boer Kiko Cross. I think it's a Boer Kiko Cross. It's called a Tex Master Meat Goat. Either a Boer Kiko Cross or a Savannah Boer Cross. Mm, I'm not sure on that one. I would have to look that up again. Yeah, I don't use a saw too much. Um, I did once. I bought an, a, a saw, and I used it um, on a lamb to cut the entire spine all the way down. Um, and that was so you could get a, a loin chop with the bone in. So we would it would be bone in with the loin. Um, I didn't like it like that. We like our um, doing our loins as like backstrap or underloin, and then I'll cut this into um, maybe about you know eight inch or one foot pieces, and I cook it like a, a dry tip. I do a rub on it, and, and then either um, cook it for a while in the oven or the smoker and then throw it on the barbecue to sear it right at the end. Um, so we like our loin like this instead of bone in like a loin saw. So I don't use a saw um, as much as I thought I would. Here just comes right off. You follow those seams in the meat. And just pull them apart. And there's a nice little uh, leg roast. I guess that could be, I don't know which part that is. I'm not, like I said, I'm not super familiar on the, what they're actually called. Um, little leg roast there. And then out of this, probably get some small steaks. This will probably end up being stew. Probably do stew meat with the rest of this. Uh, it's getting down into the, 
lower part of the leg and that usually just has a lot of tendons and be the capital of Angora country, okay. Lowers in Spanish. More goats within 100 miles of me than people. That doesn't sound too bad, actually. <laughs> Let's see, rest of the lake here. Finish deboning this. You're just using the tip of your knife and you're just following that bone all the way around. Joint and there's the femur bone. Trim a little bit off of that. Round. Okay. Two muscles here. Another little leg roast. That. The rest of this will be probably jerky and stew meat. Meat trim the fat. Uh, and another uh, boneless, uh, nice little leg roast. You could wrap that in two strings and roast that, and that would be a nice little roast. And the rest of this goes to grind. All right, so we've got three roasts. Um, this one here might be big enough to do steaks with. Um, we could get maybe two, two or three steaks out of that. Little leg steaks might not be too bad to try. Get on to the other one here. Roasts. This is the finished pile back here. Yeah, I'm curious to see how much meat we actually get. So I kind of base everything off of the first lamb that I processed. Um, it was 110 pounds live. We ended up with 50 
two pounds hanging weight. And I think we put 39 pounds in the freezer out of that. Um, when I looked up those percentages, everything uh, was pretty good on that compared to what other butchers get. Um, this guy was 125 pounds live and I only got, I think he was 54 pounds hanging. Uh, so he was only, he was 15 more pounds heavier live, but only two pounds heavier hanging weight. So he had, he did have a lot of fat on him. Um, so we'll kind of see what we end up with. I'll weigh everything at the end and kind of get the percentages of live to hanging to in the freezer. Hey guys, welcome. Thanks, Gil, for sending everybody over. I appreciate it. All the bones out. All we are left with is all meat left. I'm just going to split these up like the others. Get rid of that gland first like we did last time. I'm gonna say this is called like a tarsal gland or something like that. Tarsal order. I know most most uh, ruminants have them. Deer. To the trash again, go wash hands. Yes, that's the same same gland that's in the deer leg. So I'm gonna go throw that away and wash hands because you don't wanna get that into your meat.
you can see there's in between those muscles. I haven't cut this at all. It's, I'm just following the uh, tissue between the muscles. I mean, you can almost just pull them apart. You just take your knife and just nice little cuts. All the different muscle groups come right off. They're another little uh, leg roast. Yeah, I know it's some it's something to do with hormones or uh, scent. It's it's something I know you don't want to get your meat contaminated with. And I don't know if it's different with this being a weathered goat. Um, Leg roast from the other side. This will probably just be uh, jerky, though. I'll probably take this and slice it. Make jerky with that. Trim some of the fat off. Yeah, we've got one one buck out there. I guess he's still kind of in rut. Are you just talking about when they're alive and in the rut and then peeing all over them their face and everything like that? Built on the rock homestead. We have three bucks out there that are all in rut at the same time. They're having fun and on each other and themselves and
big chunk of fat right in here. Usually fat is flavor, but I don't seem to think that so much with uh, red meat. Um, on the tenderloins, I'll leave the fat on those and sear them fat side down and that fat kind of melts and gives you something. But some of this stuff that's in these legs, um, I don't enjoy as well as much. Another nice little leg roast. A bone was originally sitting there, so it um, would have wrapped around the bone like that, but I debone everything. Um, you know, your weight is a little less. Uh, just easier for us to package, and we don't have to worry about the bone in there. We just use all the bones for soups and stuff like that. So another leg roast. Possibly another one there, but probably trim all that up for uh, ground and stew. Running doe deer don't smell that great either. Buck sniff a doe and the perfume shows up. Neat during rock. I hate touching a buck in the rut. Yeah, we had a little buckling, and uh, he's super friendly. He's like a puppy dog out there to us. Uh, he's a miniature Nubian, so he's a Nubian crossed with a Nigerian dwarf, and that creates a miniature Nubian. And he loves to play with you, but when he's got pee, when he's got pee all over his face and his beard and his front legs, and then he's trying to jump up on you to play, uh, definitely during the rut, it is not fun to try to keep him off of you when you're bringing feed in and um, playing with him and stuff like that. He kind of figured out that, you know, do a lot of back scratching and rub him on his shoulders and stuff and just try to keep him down so he's not getting his E all over you. Okay, so that's our whole loin. And rear legs, um, besides, there's some more meat to clean up on this. A lot of stuff we're going to pull off the ribs. We'll cut all the meat out of in between all the ribs. Um, but uh, all we have left is the front legs, and we'll be done. Be right back. Let me grab the front leg. Here's a front shoulder. is like getting up in the neck beat. Uh, my work phone's going off. Let me wash my hands real quick so I can see what they want at work. You taking off, Gil? Oh, no. Jander is taking off. Sorry, I gotta go watch the rest later. Doing a great job. Thank you so much. They said this is first live and um, thank you for coming and hanging out. I appreciate it. Uh, let me, here, can you get my work phone? Mm -hmm. Right here. What's it say? And the energy will be here at five. You can come in. 
Um, reply back to that. Say I can. Uh, we're doing a major power outage at work. Um, use passcode. Um, we came in and completely disconnected off grid. They're doing a preventative maintenance on our switchgear, our main breakers coming in from the city where the power comes in from the city into our building. They're doing a um, preventative maintenance on those breakers, rebuilding them, testing them and everything. So uh, we went in at uh, five o'clock this morning and shut our entire building down, turned everything off. We It's a 300,000 square foot manufacturing facility. Um, we had to shut off all of our air handlers, our chillers, um, everything off. Uh, just put I can. I can come in or I can. Um, so they're doing the work and then they want to bring power back on this afternoon. So I'll have to go back to work and help turn everything back on, uh, get it to a state that it, we can go through the night and then probably back tomorrow morning to turn everything back off so they can disconnect again for the day. Yes, I can come in. Yep. Perfect. So I got till uh, about an hour and a half and then I'm going to go back to work. That is some of the neck meat that was still kind of attached to the front shoulder. It's going to get trimmed up for the ground. Okay, shoulder. There's a... On the inside of the shoulder, it's kind of weird. Front shoulders don't have any sort of bone connection. There's no hip socket, uh, anything like that. They are completely connected from the um, main part of the body to the front shoulder with just muscle. So there is no connection of bone, really. It's just tendon and muscle. No socket there. Uh, right on the inside of the shoulder here, you have your shoulder stay. Cut right down this, there's a, it's kind of a V, V shape right here. And it looks like it's going to be pretty small on this guy. It's probably not going to be much of a shoulder stake there at all. You can actually get your hands right in there. Do one cut down. You just take your fingers. Take your fingers and you just and actually pull that whole shoulder stake right off the bone and trim it. Yeah, I mean, there's literally, on a deer, that's a decent piece of meat on these guys. That's nothing, probably just, ooh, I don't even know what to do with that. Not a whole lot for that shoulder stake. We'll figure it out later, though. Uh, maybe stew or kebabs, something like that. Thank you, Chaney. Chaney or Shaney? Uh, what uses do we have for the fat? I don't know. I would have to look that up. I don't know if you can render fat like this. Um Hey, thanks, Gil, for coming and checking it out. Go save the grandkids. Thank you, Built on the Rock Homestead. Thanks for coming and checking it out. We appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, this is not a Fiskers. This is a um, rugged, rugged edge. Lift up that sweatshirt. Yeah, you can pop it over. Okay. Outdoor edge. It was rugged edge. Outdoor edge. Um, it's kind of it's a whole kit. Uh, it comes with a fillet knife, um, a skinning knife, a zipper knife, a keeping knife for skinning. Uh, it actually comes with a pretty nice bone knife. It's just a single handle one though. A set of shears. Um, it's kind of a game processing set. I'll, I'll put a link down in the description after this. 
Um, I'm throw my sweatshirt on the ground. Grab that whole kit. Comes with a nice little knife sharpener. Take it right here and open it up. Yep. Open it up. So it's a whole. It came in this set that my wife got me. Um, this is about the fourth or fifth time I've used it. I, I usually basically just use the fillet knife more than anything. Um, and I've got a link for a really great fillet knife. If anybody's interested, I'll throw that in the description too. You can buy just the fillet knife because I seem to use that more than anything. I do when I'm um, gutting and processing the animals. Uh, I will use the caper and the skinner out of this setup. Um, I did use the butcher knife. That's this really big one uh, right here. I have used that. It cuts through bone really nice. Uh, trying to cut through vertebrae and stuff, doing your your uh, loin chops, uh, lamb chops, stuff like that. It cuts through that backbone really well. Um, but I would say, number one, I use the uh, fillet knife more than any. A fat. Uh, no, we do not sell our meat. Um, here in our state, you're supposed to be FDA certified if you want to resell your meat. Uh, we do this just for us. Um, like I said earlier in the video, these were our um, on a link. Quarantine goats. Uh, we did not get uh, deer tags this year. So we bought two goats to raise up to fill the freezer since we did not get deer tags. And we really wanted to try goat. And there was nobody around that had goat available. To try. So these are our uh, quarantine goats. Um, and we process these just for our family. Crack and welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Hey guys. Hey, how's it going? Good. It smells like meat. Yeah, it smells like meat. No, I have to read that whole thing. Uh, let's see, this might be a good stopping point. So I'm going to have to go back to work. You have to go back. Yeah, i got to go back to work a little bit here. So where do you put that in your fridge? No, it's in the cooler that you gave us. Oh, really? In the, it's working? Yeah, it's working great. Oh, cool. Yeah, we've only gone through a lot less ice. That was a good cooler. Yeah, it's it's a good cooler, so. Good. Um, cool. I think we'll stop here for today and we'll come back. Yeah. They're fine.
Um, okay, so I think we're going to stop with the front legs for now. We'll trim this up, but we got both back legs done, all of our roasts, everything's boned out. Um, neck, roast, leg roasts, loin, tenderloins. Um, go ahead and, and stop here so I can get cleaned up and go back to work. And we'll do the other front legs another time. Thank you guys all for coming in and checking this out. Did you edit the part where we were talking? After you go through, sure.